Okay, we're going to dive into word balloons, and the word balloons in Motion Artist are fairly versatile. I'm going to click on the text and word balloon tool, and you'll see a default balloon will pop up. And I'll go through the basics here, and then get into how to create these and <clears throat> where to keep them. So this particular balloon has the tail pointing upward, and if I want to change that, I can do a number of things. I can flip it uh, very easily by selecting one of these options here to change the the direction. And then also uh, I can edit the length and position of the tail um, by using the sliders that are provided with each word balloon. Now I can do a number of other things. If I have some text on my system, I'm sorry, if I have a font on my system that I'd like to use, I can use the font on my system. What happens is, is this font gets rasterized and these word balloons get rasterized when they get saved into the project. So if you share the project with another person, um, you're not distributing the font. They would need to have the font to be able to edit these word balloons on their own machine later. Um, but if you have them, obviously you can edit them and also they're not saved into the final presentation. Obviously that's rasterized and output, so there's no issue with redistributing fonts here. The word balloons are vector-based and this dialog is non-modal, so if you um, make some changes to this in any way, shape, or form, uh, and don't hit the apply button. If you click on the text or on the um, sorry on the text here, I'm going to change the text. If you change something like that and you hit the OK button, go back, decide you want to change the text back, and then click on the canvas. Um, it'll revert because you didn't hit the apply button. What this means is you can work on multiple balloons with the dialog open and be able to apply your changes through the dialog button and not have to open and close the dialog so much. So once you get used to working with that, um, it's okay, but be aware that if you do make any changes and then click on the canvas without hitting and apply, uh, they'll go back to um, what they were. So let's change that back to um, one of the other word balloons here. And if I want to change the color or the stroke of this, I can do that. Um, unlike panels, I can't apply a brush to a stroke, um, but I can change the stroke by creating a new balloon. And how the new balloon is created is, in this requires Anime Studio. I'm going to switch to Anime Studio Pro right now and just show you quickly um, how a balloon is created. There's a simple object here. Um, in this case, this is one of the balloons for the flowchart, and it's a diamond shape. And what I've done is I've created a new action so you just create new action here, name the action, um, and then actually move the points, drag the points of the balloon uh, to where you want them, and you're actually creating what's called a blend warp. So if you look at this, I've kind of rounded the edges here, and you create a short animation in Anime Studio, and uh, save that animation out, and where you save it to is in the Word Balloons folder. Now this is in um, on a Macintosh, the Applications folder, Motion Artist app, you need to show package contents. Look at the contents, resources, support, word balloons, and in there you have all of the balloons that are saved as anime files. So, it's pretty versatile. This is actually just reading in an anime studio file and um, using with blend morphs on it uh, to allow you to create and use the word balloons. Now, I'm going to close this dialog box and if at any time throughout the presentation I want to go back and edit it, all I have to do is double click on the balloon either on uh, the canvas or double click on it on the timeline and I can do that. So there's an interesting thing. If you're using these uh, as titling, for example, I'll, I'll use that as an example and not have any balloon, hit none, um, and I want uh, to animate this text and have different types of text that animate in the same way. For example, um, the title is going to move into my presentation, um, spin a little bit, and uh, we'll make it get uh, a little bigger here. So real quick animation for demo purposes, nothing fancy, right? Um, I go back and I double click on this and And uh, I'm going to put a word in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just duplicate this by doing a copy and paste. So now I actually have two of these. 
And then what I'll do is I will, at frame one, drag this one directly down to where I want it. And then at frame two, do a very similar thing. I should say stop point one and two. So let's see what that looks like right now. So I'm going to go back and click on that word balloon again. I actually clicked on the stop point right there. So. and change to a different font. And then I'll go ahead and play through. And now you can see that I have an animation of uh, two different types of text animating the same way. So that's a little trick that you can do with or without a word balloon. So if uh, I had this as my word balloon later, um, I can go back and change to uh, the burst and hit the apply button and now what I have is um, a burst with the text animated in it. So the point is it's very versatile, it's fairly easy to use. Um, you can create your own word balloons. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention was back in Anime Studio, the edges, um, and this is more of an Anime Studio tutorial so I'm not going to go into all the details. Uh, in Anime Studio, if you do have Anime Studio and you know how to use it, you can apply different brush effects um, and different fills to these word balloons.